just got back from um, the permanent internet marketing conference in Huntington Beach, California for multifamily stateside. So it's such a treat to come here for my first time and join, join you all. Um, and again, I'm the director of social media at homes.com and burn.com, and we've got Jamie Gorski here as well. Hello, I'm Jamie Gorski. I'm the chief marketing officer for Mizuno, which is a diversified real estate firm located in the Washington, D.C. area. So we build and sell homes, we do land development, we build apartment communities, and we have over 200 apartment communities located in the Northeast. And so in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. And I'm so lucky to be with Erica. She's an amazing presenter, and I really hope you like our material today. Thank you. One thing that's notorious about Jamie and I is we have so much content, so we're going to send you on a really whirlwind trip today. Um, and our subject is integrating social media into an overall marketing strategy. And I think it's a really big common theme that we're seeing throughout the day. For those of you that are tweeting live, you can follow me at Erica Campbell, and you can also follow for rent for rent, as well as at Homes Pro for Homes.com. Just for a couple things, since I'm new to Canada, this is my first time here. For those of you that don't know a little bit about me, but I started doing social media in 2004 personally, and then I got into business in 2006 with social media, doing it for my company, where I started managing over 100 MySpace profiles for my corporate um, culture, and it was really interesting because all of us were blocked from social media. So I remember going to the president of my company and really struggling how, uh, having the entire company lift off certain people in each city office to grant one person in each office access to Facebook and MySpace. So it was a long trek through, but I really made my way through the company and in, in increasing the engagement levels and embracing social media throughout the corporate culture. So it's been really fun to see where we've come in, in the past couple of years here. And for those of you that follow me on social media, um, specifically Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest, you'll know that I have a big obsession with wine, food, food paired with wine, as well as uh, taking you through a glimpse of what it was like for planning my wedding. I actually used Pinterest three years ago to plan virtually my entire wedding, and I actually had my wedding planner join a board with me. She was a co-board author in, inside of Pinterest, which enabled us to really hammer through the wedding planning inside of that environment. I showcase a lot of my travel. I travel all over the country, so that's fun, as well as brand love. Showcasing, um, renovating my home, as well as um, decorating and fashion. Those are some of the trends. And what I've been doing personally in social media is using hashtags to uniquely identify each of the content so that I can come back to it and research it and find all of my content. So I've really replaced putting all of my photos on desktop or even using Facebook photo albums. I use hashtags to identify everything. So I've got unique hashtags for ECB travel adventures, ECB home adventures, ECB decor and style and things like that so that I can go back and kind of track this. So today we're going to talk a lot about visual storytelling and that's a big trend that we're seeing in social media. And one of the newest additions in um, what's funny with, with planning a wedding is actually too early to social media with Instagram. I created a unique hashtag for the wedding called hashtag Erica and Todd, and I put it on cocktail napkins, I had signage at the wedding, and this was two years ago, only two years ago, and none of my guests participated. I was too early into Instagram. The users weren't there yet. You know, my, my family and friends hadn't been on it yet, so that was an interesting story. And you fast forward now and you look at weddings and they're using hashtags all the time. The newest addition to my family is Brooks Byron. added a hashtag for him. You can follow him on Instagram as well. He has his own Instagram account. So this is just kind of an insight into how people are using social media personally. But enough about personal use, so I really want to get into now how you can put this into practical use in business. So just a quick update on the state of social media and what we're seeing um, in particular with the core main uh, specific sites. Looking at Facebook, there's over 800 million daily active users in this space. So obviously the, the data is telling us that you guys are in Facebook, you're using it. Um, this is probably still one of the top performing sites for not only referral traffic, but also for conversions, at least what I'm finding at homes.com and forrent.com. So this is you know, where I spend most of my time and energy. You're also seeing uh, you know, beautiful graphics, and Jamie's got some incredible examples of what they're doing with her group. And I really like how people are thinking a little bit more outside of the box with creative ideas inside of Facebook and, again, visually storytelling. With Instagram, this is a huge platform. This is probably my favorite platform now that I'm using the 
most. This is where I visually tell my story, as I showed you in my personal slides here, where I showcase a lot of my likes and interests from a personal standpoint, mixing in with business. It's 68% female, and there's over 55 billion total photos shared. That's a ton of content being in, uh, inserted into that space, and over 1.6 billion likes happening at the photo level. So that's a ton of people actually engaging, not just with their uh, friends and family, but also with brands. So here's an example of the boutique uh, real estate group. I highly recommend you follow them. They're out of Orange County in California in the United States, and they do an incredible job at visually telling their story through social media. And again, they're selling high-end real estate, but I think we can learn a lot from just different verticals and what they're doing well, and this particular group does it spot on. With Pinterest, this is also one of my favorite resources. There's over 70 million users in the space. It's the third largest social networking platform. But more importantly, it is a powerhouse for driving referral traffic into your website. It's the number one referral source of traffic socially for homes.com and forrent.com out of all the social sites. But what you'll find is that it's not going to convert as high as some of the others. But what's alarming is that the average user spends 98 minutes per month on this site. So if you're not using Pinterest, uh, I definitely would recommend taking a look at it. And 70% of clicks on pins, they happen within 48 hours. So it's really important that you're thinking through what types of content you're going to push into this space or curate or crowdsource and the timing of when you're doing it and if you're actually engaging that. This is an example of what Pinterest looks like. Um, again, how many of you today use your um, browser to bookmark your favorite website? Right, so Pinterest has replaced that need for myself. I have Pinterest downloaded on my mobile app, and when I find my favorite piece of content, website, anything article related or photo on the web, I simply store that, I pin it, categorize it into a pin board, and then I have it directly on my mobile device. So when I open up that pin board and click on the photo, it drives me back to the originating source. So it's a great sense of referral traffic for us as marketers, but more importantly, it's a utility type app that allows us to be more connected with the things that we enjoy in a much quicker time frame. With Twitter, there's over 500 million tweets sent per day. With more than 40 million Vine users, Twitter acquired Vine. So we're starting to see Vine take off and also competing with Instagram heavily as Instagram released video. Um, and then 76% of active users are on mobile. So we're starting to see a lot of these social platforms really perform stronger and stronger in mobile, and they're actually starting to design and develop their apps and sites more for mobile, and then going into desktop. Some cool things with Twitter. Jamie's gonna talk about some cool announcements that Twitter's made recently, but you'll notice the first thing you see is again, visually storytelling. This is Raj Kassar. He is a agent broker with the uh, boutique real estate group, the one I mentioned in Orange County, and he does a tremendous job of really visually telling his story through all of his platforms. There's some great things going on with real-time marketing and Twitter, capitalizing on hashtags. During the Oscars, we did live tweeting, and we capitalized on the Oscars hashtag, and we actually capitalized on that moment of that epic selfie, and that really took off for us. So real-time Twitter marketing is really cool and effective, as well as Twitter cards. Twitter cards are great, especially for the folks that don't have a ton of time to be in Twitter, but you really want to promote maybe it's an ebook, a white paper, or some kind of promotion that you have. Twitter cards will really do the work for you. YouTube, this is uh, the second largest search engine. It's partnered with Google. It has a tremendous opportunity for search engine optimization. If you don't have a YouTube channel today, I highly recommend setting one up for the sheer value of how much traffic you can generate and the good SEO juice that's going to come out of it. And there's also one billion users per month in the space. You have a really strong captive audience in there. This is an example of the boutique real estate group's YouTube page. Again, you'll notice the consistent theme here with this group is they're carrying over their branding from source to source to source. So everything centers around the hub of their website and their blog, and they work outwards to their social sites. And Jamie's going to talk a lot about that today as well. But the biggest lesson here, what I'm learning from social media, and what I'm finding trend-wise, is that social media plus content marketing equals killer SEO. And I don't know about you, but we all love free traffic. Um, you know, you spend an, an alarming amount of dollars with paid search and some of the tactics that you can 
you do with search engine optimization and SEO and a combination of the two together are really amazing and, and you'll see your cost per click go down because your efforts are being spent socially. And this is one of the things that I need to go to my senior team and say, hey, social media is not just about building relationships and having those um, conversations and engagement. Sure, that's all very, very important. Those are things that we practice, but I have to also sell up to them that it's powerful with search engine optimization. And that kind of led us into being able to do a little bit more in the space. So one of the things that search engines are telling us today is that uh, social signals are helping influence how you rank in search. So this is another key slide to get you on board with social media if you're not already. Search engines today tell us that anything from Google+, Plus, Facebook shares, Facebook likes, Facebook comments, Pinterest, pins, tweets, all of these things that the consumers are doing on your behalf on top of your content are sending out signals to the search engines and saying this is likable content, it's shareable content, it's well-connected content, therefore we'll reward you and rank you higher in the search engines. So interesting study and I'll blow up on that again. So out of all of those line items that you saw on that chart, those were traditional SEO tactics back in the day like backlinks and the length of uh, how long your website has been in existence. And um, you know all the partnerships and things, all of that is still important, but you see everything in orange is now sort of split up to the top of the chart here, and those are called social signals. So this is a really cool chart from Search Metrics that's great to share with your teams to better understand the power of social media and how that can really influence how you rank in search. So now I'm going to get into some creative ideas and how you can visually tell your story. And I specifically chose Pinterest and Instagram because I think that they're two really important platforms that drive room for a lot of creativity. And uh, can I get a show of hands in the room? How many of you guys are using these two platforms for business? Okay, great. So not a lot. So hopefully we can come back in a few years and see all the, you know, a lot more of these hands raised and we're using these two in the States and we've seen some tremendous success with them. So I'm going to first kick it off with Pinterest. And one of the things I love about Pinterest, again, is it's got a tremendous amount of referral traffic in here, but you can also use it to mine data, curate content, and then take those ideas and bring it back into your own website and your blogs and use that for your own social posting. So there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. So I explained what Pinterest is, but it's a tool for collecting and organizing the things that you love. And you'll notice that it's highly, highly visual. Everything in here is going to be driven by photo assets, or video assets, and text, and bridge links back into the originating source. So here's an example of how an apartment or uh, you know one of your suites might be organized inside of Pinterest. You have the opportunity to categorize and collect a lot of different things. Maybe it's home decor, different space ideas, um, spring entertaining tips, moving tips. The possibilities for how you categorize this is pretty endless, but all social sites are pretty familiar in nature where they've got the photo, the description, and a link back into your website. So making sure that that's in theme with your Facebook account, your Twitter account, and so forth. But how Pinterest is so successful is when I go to a website and I find a piece of content that I enjoy, I'm going to pin that. Users are then going to come into Pinterest. They're going to find that. They're going to repin it. When they repin that, other people in their network are going to see that repin. And the cycle is just going to keep on going and going and going. And when users click on that photo object, it links back to your website, driving that referral traffic, and then potentially conversions. So I always joke about this at the office, is Pinterest is like fantasy football for girls. Again, the average time we've spent in this platform is 98 minutes. That's a ton of time. So I can only imagine what it's like. Instead of me drafting my team, I'm sitting here on Pinterest for six hours on a car ride down to Charleston, South Carolina, pinning objects into to pin boards. So I really felt that there was a strong connection there. This is a great example of what we're seeing as a case study, and it's really difficult to find strong case studies in Pinterest actually happening at the conversion level when you're not an e-commerce site, like an Etsy, where you don't have an object to sell. Um, that's very low priced and quick. And with this guy, this is uh, a realtor, and he sold, uh, he listed his Paradise Cove mobile home in Malibu for sale. He put it on Pinterest, and in less than six days, it was in escrow, all because of this Pinterest board. So it was his first attempt at really putting some effort towards Pinterest marketing. So I thought that was a really cool case study to show that we're now starting to see more and more of these happen over the years. But one of the important things you need to know about Pinterest is you should verify your website. It gives you a little check mark after your account. But more importantly, 
when you actually verify your website, what it does is it gives you this piece of code that you can give to your webmaster to apply into your website. And with that, it allows you to track analytics. So you can track all sorts of things, people that are pinning content from your website, people that are pinning content from your Pinterest boards, top pinned content, um, all kinds of great intel about mining data that's happening at the pin level. So that's the benefit of verifying your website. And I think that there's also some SEO value behind this as well. Another thing that you can do to automatically increase sharing traffic from your website into Pinterest is by applying the pin button directly to your website. So this will allow users to come in and actually share content directly from your website and pin it into their pin board. And a lot of the super heavy users of Pinterest already have the Pinterest button installed in their browser so they can do this or on their mobile device. But by you applying that button directly on your website, you're saying that this, you're making that job for them a lot easier and they're going to be more likely to pin that piece of content, which will increase your click-through rates back to your website. Some interesting ideas for what to pin inside of Pinterest. I get this question all asked all the time for our specific industry. And one of the things I recommend is doing a uh, meet the team board, where you showcase all of your employees. You've got headshots, brief bio, and they link back to your about us section on your website. So it's a great way to really humanize your brand, but again, capitalizing on that traffic. And you'll notice how there's a lot of information being produced from flyers and different things that you can cross promote, anything that you're doing offline, and mixing that into online with Pinterest. Obviously, here you can showcase listings. But when you're showcasing listings, add some text overlay on top of these graphics. And I'm going to share a list of my top favorite photo editing apps for you. But one of the also important things that you need to do is add in a good description at the pin level. And then what you would want to do is add hashtags. And these hashtags allow you to be found inside of Pinterest. So those are the things that are going to help you rank high in search. And what I found is um, we just created a Pinterest account for one of our clients, as well as Google Plus and YouTube. And all three of those accounts are out ranking their own website. So there's a lot of power behind what some of these sites can do. Green Living, uh, you know, we talked about this theme a lot today, and we noticed that um, people will jump behind a cause before they'll actually support a brand. So I love what Graystar is doing here with redefining green, and they've got an entire board really centered around that and their mission as a company. So if you have some sort of cause and support that you have, people would love to see that, and Pinterest is a great place to showcase that. Customer testimonials. If you guys have anything on camera or you've got video testimonials, or possibly even taking a screenshot of your positive reviews from Yelp or from any of the other review sites. Take a screenshot of that and put that into your customer testimonials board. That way, when consumers are coming and looking at your Pinterest account, they've got reviews and ratings directly at their fingertips. And what we're finding is that those are absolutely increasing conversions. People want to see those stars. Positioning yourself as the local expert is another great idea for a board. Um, focusing in on neighborhoods, dining, shopping, any sort of entertainment, um, local businesses and schools. These are the things that you know, renters and buyers, that they want to see. You know, they're able to see the listings on the website, but they also want to know that you know enough about the neighborhood to help them with their decision. So what I love about what the realtor did in Orange County is he created a Pinterest board just for Orange County burgers, the best joints in Orange County to purchase a really killer burger. So I thought that was a really creative way to position himself as that go-to expert. <laughs> Lifestyle tips, these are really important. The number one search category and the number one board name inside of Pinterest is for the home. That's a hit front for our industry. So there's tons of DIY home decor items that are being pinned in there. So even if you're not, you don't have these things on your website, you can go in and curate other objects that have already been pinned inside of here. So some things to consider, recipes, DIY, home decor, organization, going green. Maybe it's housewarming gift ideas. These are great things after you've taken a tour of your suite, bring them into your Pinterest account and let them see all of your great local and lifestyle tips. Again, it's going back to the concept of uh, providing utility type content that's useful. It's all about, Jay Bear mentioned, it's about um, you know, helping people versus hype. Marketing ideas. How many of you guys have found a really killer ad in a print magazine and you've tore it out and you've saved it because you want to execute some of the details from that ad? So no longer do we have to do that. We can find an object on the web, find our inspiration, store it in our Pinterest board, and we've got access to it in our mobile device. 
staging ideas for your suites. There's tons of information already in here. If you just do a search for suite staging ideas, you're going to find a tremendous amount of content already available at your fingertips. So using this for inspiration when you're breaking ground, or um, even if you're redoing some models, this is some great inspiration in here. Rental advice. What I love about what the Corcoran Group is doing is they've got infographics where they're comparing neighborhood data and neighborhood bars and restaurants. It's a fun way to express something in a more visual way, again, visually telling that story. So I recommend if you're not following the Corcoran Group on Twitter and Facebook and all the social sites, it's actually one of Jamie and I's favorites. They do some really compelling stuff. Place Pins is a really cool product inside of Pinterest that allows you to add uh, a map, address, and phone number. So when I go into Pinterest and I take a look at all of these apartment communities, when I click on the pin drop, it brings me into each individual apartment community, which links back to the website. So it's a great visual way to showcase that, but also more importantly, driving that referral traffic back home. Running consumer contests inside of Pinterest. We're launching a Pinterest contest right now where we're uh, asking consumers to build their dream board inside of Pinterest. And we will reward one winner of the grand prize. And we'll also go after 10 people that entered and we're going to give them um, 10 objects that they pinned in their board. We're actually going to buy them for them and drop ship them to them. So it's a great goodwill campaign associated with that. And you're getting the consumers to do the work for you. Take a screenshot of this with your mobile device. This is a free Pinterest white paper that you guys can download from us. I'll also have access to some cards if you guys want them at the end. We're going to give you a link to this white paper. And it's going to give you all best practices on Pinterest and running challenges and campaigns and consumer promotions. So now we're going to dive quickly into Instagram. And one of my favorite things with Instagram is it's the way that I'm capturing my life moments and I'm sharing them with the world. But for a business perspective, this is what Remax's account looks like. Just for an example, you're going to have your title, your description, a good headshot in there, company logo, and you're going to post photos. And very similar to all the other social networking sites, you can follow and be followed by people. So here's an example. You can take your mobile device. There's an application you download. You take a photo. You have the capability to add over uh, about 20 different filters. And filters are great because they really dress up the photo. And you'll notice you add text and you use hashtags to track each of those specific photos. So here's the filter option. So I'm not a professional photographer, but when I use Instagram and add filters, I can absolutely tell you I feel like a professional photographer. Raise your hand in the room if, if that's the case for you. A couple of them? Yeah, so I love Instagram for that sure fact. Here's an example of a before photo that I took and then after once I dropped it into an Instagram filter. So it's saving me time and it's really dressing up the content. The important thing to know about Instagram and Pinterest is you need to add relevant hashtags. Research is saying that brands that are adding up to seven hashtags will see more success with your findability. So it's important because if you have low followers on these channels, the hashtags will increase the likelihood of someone finding your content and clicking back to your website. Another uh, idea that you can do on Pinterest is cross-promote. If you've got Facebook, if you've got a website, you've got any print material, use this opportunity to cross-promote and drive back into the original assets that you already have so you're thinking smarter and not working harder. Taking a look at floor plans and specials, what I love about what this community has done is they've done some really beautiful text overlay on top of photos, so it entices me as a user to look, look in and take a look a little bit more at the floor plans and specials that they have offering. Other ideas is with features and amenities. Highlighting these specific assets are really important, but one of the things that we're doing at Homes.com and for rent for experimenting is playing with an A and a B option, where it really allows us to take a look at two different images, and it generates a ton of buzz. We ask the consumer to come in and select a choice, whether it's A or B, and we see so much engagement. And this was working well with us on Facebook, so we translated that into Instagram. So I recommend that you can do an A or B choice and ask your consumers to vote, and you'll really start to see an uptick in your engagement. Brand culture is really important to express through Instagram as well. It's not just all about business and all about showcasing the suites and the models and so forth, but the people behind your brand. So any goodwill initiatives that you're doing, as well as outings, maybe it's charity work, or it's just having fun in the office. Showcase that through your Instagram account to really humanize your brand. Showing behind the scenes, I know we've got Rebecca from HubSpot coming up next. She 
does an awesome job, and HubSpot is in, in, in general, does a tremendous job with social media and, and inbound marketing, and they have a really cool board inside of Pinterest that I love and Instagram, where they're showcasing behind the scenes. Things that are happening behind the office, maybe it's behind the scenes of events, this is a great way, again, to sneak in, it's a sneak peek into the culture and the lifestyle behind the brand. Events and perks. If you're doing any sort of tenant events or you've got any sort of resident perks, these are a great place to showcase those on Instagram. It's quick, it's fast, it's easy, and it helps drive home that word of mouth for the event. Lifestyle. One of the greatest things about Instagram is that you can emulate what Instagram users are already doing and posting specifically photos that look like an Instagrammer actually took them versus posting high-end professional photography. It's actually more appropriate to, to, to showcase a photo that you've taken directly from your mobile device. It again humanizes it, so putting utility-type content at the fingertips of the users, like uh, organization storage for the refrigerator, that's a useful piece of content that you're then providing to your residents. Infographics are really popular, pets are really popular. If you have anything to do with dogs, people will get tons of likes and comments and shares on any of the social channels. They're just very popular and they really help increase your social signals. If you've got happy residents and tenants, showcase them after they sign their lease and they've got their keys. This is a great moment and it's a fun way versus capturing you know, an entire paragraph testimonial. It's more of a fun uh, a photo that you can apply to both Pinterest and all of your social sites as well as Instagram. Sneak peeks, if you're breaking ground in construction, anything that's coming to market soon, these are great ways where you can kind of leak it out into the marketplace in a social way. Again, position yourself as the local expert in Pinterest. The gentleman positioned um, a board for the top fast burger joints in Orange County, and then he's also doing that on a smaller scale on Instagram where he's taking a photo of the actual burger that he's been to. So it really humanizes him and it makes me want to trust to do business with him because he's the local expert. Contests are a great form of crowdsourcing content. One of the things if you're short on budget and short on people, go to the power of the crowd. Ask consumers to do a photo contest, enter for a chance to win, and you then own all the rights to those assets that people are using your marketing material. With that, we were able to generate all these different photos that we can now use across all of our marketing efforts. And they're really beautiful photos, and it's a story that's been told by our consumers versus always from us as a brand. In fact, one of the photos we took that was crowdsourced, and we put it into a Facebook media buy app, and it did tremendous. It had over a 1,000 likes in like the first five minutes because we used an actual consumer-generated photo versus a paid photo that we bought that was stock. So experimenting with those user-generated photos these are my uh, most favorite photo editing apps. How many of you have taken a photo on and you want to put it into Instagram and you can't fit the photo because it's too large? That last app there, Rana Designs, is the best app. It's $1.99 in the app store and it's my most favorite app that allows you to actually get your photos to fit Instagram's frame. So out of all of them, that's the best one, as well as Big Monkey. And then just wrapping up with in integration, you know, we're talking about integrating social media into the overall marketing campaign. We've given you some fast examples, and Jamie's about to come up. But the bottom line is working smarter, not harder. I love this graphic. I always share this graphic with my team to remind them that we have a ton of content at our disposal, things that you guys have been building for years. So an example of how you might integrate this specific piece of content, this example is an infographic. My team will take an infographic, we can create four website articles out of that. We can uh, produce 25 tweets from the same infographic. We can do five Facebook posts, seven Google Plus posts, four Instagram posts. We can pin it five different ways inside of Pinterest, and we can create it into a SlideShare account on slideshare.net. So we've taken one creative and repurposed it across the board in multiple ways. So that's the way, a great way to integrate when you're low on budget and low on resources. And then here's another example of how we integrated social media into our overall, overall marketing campaign. We did a survey to all of our renters, and we asked them specific questions. We turned that survey into an infographic to produce the data versus a boring study. We then pushed that into a checklist. We found out some likes and data that we were really interesting. We put it into a checklist, which we then put on all the social channels. 
We wrapped up a hashtag into our first ever national ad campaign where we had TV, billboard, and Times Square, all of that. We had our national hashtag in there. We produced an ebook which had some creative juices that came from the survey and came from the checklist and came from the uh, infographic. And then we pushed that and carried that over into two consumer sweepstakes that we did in Facebook. So again, taking a campaign theme, starting from a survey and pushing it all the way through to TV, radio, all the way down into social media. So again, it's that ethic of thinking uh, you know, smarter versus harder. And at the end of the day, what we're finding is that content is fire and social media is gasoline. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Jay Beard. Not read any of his work, I highly recommend him. He's, he's wonderful to really help us shape up the definition of content and how social media really helps fuel your content. And then this is the link where you can access my deck because I know I went really fast and from the Northeast, so I talk fast. And now I'm going to have Jamie jump, jump on up and dig in.